Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair so I may climb the golden stair. There's something rather sad about Rapunzel's story. You know, out of all of the fairy tales that I've read of, the, particularly the history of, as I should say, hers is one of the most neglected and underspoken of. I ran my fingers over tens of books that I own about the history of fairy tales, and she wasn't mentioned once in any of them. Perhaps that should have been a sign for me to abandon my venture into this tale and write a whole video essay about it, but it only spurred my curiosity further. I was left wondering why. You know, why, despite being one of the most recognisable figures in fairy tale lore, was dear old Rapunzel spoken so little of? Well, enter, dear reader, into the realm where reality entwines with myth. Within the library of dark pages and eerie epistles, ancient knowledge waits, eager to be unearthed. Amongst dusty tomes and faded parchment, forgotten secrets stir, untold tales resurrect. Venture forth into the labyrinth of words and ink, where the boundaries of your beliefs shall be challenged, and chilling truths shall be exposed from the shadows. Welcome to my library, with all its twisted corridors, where the line between fact and fiction blurs, and the whispers of the past lure you into deeper into the abyss of mystery and macabre. But before we get any further, I would like to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. I have built all my main business websites over the past few years with Squarespace because I love how intuitive and easy it makes website design and layout. I don't know anything about coding, which has made using other website platforms incredibly frustrating. Uh, in the past, I've just given up. But with Squarespace, I can simply drag and drop my content where I want it. So if you're a creator like me and you want to expand your revenue stream, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy for you to monetize your content and expertise in a way that fits your brand. Squarespace member area, for example, lets you sell your online courses or classes to followers. And Squarespace also has an inbuilt email campaign option where you can collect an email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers, all from your website. And the built-in analytics feature gives you insight into who is visiting your site, the traffic sources, the time they spend on your site, your audience geography, and so much more. So if you want to expand your business or just build a website for your blogging leisure, then go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash lady of the library to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into it. So first... Let's retell the story of Rapunzel, which was first published in 1812 by the Brothers Grimm in one of their lesser-known compendiums of the tales, entitled Children's and Household Tales. The story documented by the Grimm brothers is based on a 17th century version of the tale, and it's very likely that the tale dates back even earlier than that. According to this version of the story, there was once a young, married couple who longed for a child. They lived in a little cottage beside a beautiful garden filled with rampion, which is a kind of bitter salad green, though often identified by editors of the tales as something akin to lettuce or spinach. The wife loved rampion and often craved it so much that she seemed to be dying of want. Whatever the reason, her loving husband one day snuck into the private garden to bring his wife the much-desired rampion. But one day, after many successful attempts, he was caught by the owner of that garden, an evil witch, who threatened to punish him and his wife for stealing from her. In an effort to save himself and his wife, the husband agrees to the witch's demands that they were to give her their first-born child. 
As the pair had been childless their entire marriage, the husband didn't see the risk in the promise. The likelihood that they would have a child was slim, and thus he and his wife could continue eating rampion for the rest of their lives without the fear of punishment from the witch. Unfortunately slash fortunately for him, his plan didn't work in his favour. Just a year later, the wife gave birth to their first child, a beautiful baby girl. He had actually never told his wife about his promise to the witch, and in his happiness and excitement of his wife's pregnancy, he'd forgotten all about it. That was until the witch turned up at their door just a day after the baby girl was born, and demanded they hand her over. The witch, known as Gothel, named the baby Rapunzel, which is another name for Rampion, and locked her away in a tower in the forest. The tower the child grew up in was locked off from the world. There were no doors, nor was there a staircase, only a singular window from which the girl could look out from and watch the world go by. As she grew older, her hair grew longer, and her long golden locks trailed the length of the tower, and then some. Every day, when the witch came to visit and bring the girl food, she would cry out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, so that I may climb the golden stair. Rapunzel had very little to do alone in the tower, so she would often sing to herself as she watched the birds fly by. Though one day, a handsome prince was riding through the forest, when he heard her enchanted singing, and he followed the sound to the looming tower. Desperate to meet the fair maiden whose singing had enchanted him, he circled the tower looking for an entrance, but no door could be found. Just then, he heard an old croaking cry from the other side of the tower, just beneath the window. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, so that I may climb the golden stair. The prince rushed towards the forest and circled the tower from a distance, only just to see the old witch standing there before a majestic cascading golden locks that ran the length of the tower. The prince now knew how to gain entry, so he, w so he waited in the bushes for the old witch to leave, and then he made his move. He mimicked the old witch's cry up to Rapunzel, who was rather confused to hear Gothel once again. I mean, after all, she'd just left, but perhaps she'd forgotten something. Thinking nothing of it, she threw her hair down for the witch to climb, but was terrified when a man came over the ledge rather than Gothel. Rapunzel, remember, had never seen a man before, but in true fairy tale fashion, the handsome prince calmed her nerves, and within the night, they fell madly in love, and he asked her to come back to him, to his kingdom, to marry him. So the two hatched a plan for Rapunzel to escape the building, by building a silken rope for Rapunzel to use to climb down herself. Every night, the prince visited Rapunzel after the witch was gone, bringing with him some silken rope that they were fashioned every night together. That wasn't the only thing they fashioned together, by the way, we'll get to that. So their plan was working until one day Rapunzel very ridiculously revealed her secret to the witch. You see, frustrated that the old woman was quite slow when climbing her hair, she made a remark how much faster the king's son was at climbing, which, yes, gave away her whole visitor and the secret plan that they were hatching. Furious, the witch cut off Rapunzel's long hair and forced her to climb down her own hair and banished her into the woods. When the prince came over that night, he climbed up Rapunzel's hair as always, but was horrified when he saw that the locks were attached to just a beam in the tower, and from the darkness, Gothel stepped forward to confront him. Grief strucken at the loss of Rapunzel, he didn't wait around to hear what Gothel had to say. The prince instead threw himself from the tower and landed in a thorn bush, which gouged out his eyes. I know it's rather dramatic, you know, he could have just left the same way he came in and probably just taken a bit slower, you know, but anyway. The blind prince wandered the forest for many years to come, devastated at the loss of his true love. That was until one day he heard her singing, and he followed the song into the wilderness. Rapunzel was actually sitting in a glen, 
taking care of her twin children, whom she had conceived during the many nights that the prince and her were building a rope, wink wink. Then, from a distance, she saw the prince stumble towards him, and rushed over and took him into her arms, and wept for joy. As her tears fell onto his face, his eyesight was restored, and the two left the wilderness with their children to return to his kingdom, and lived happily ever after. Ironically, though this story is a bit grisly in parts, this version of the tale was actually a summary of the 1857 sanitised version of the 1812 version, which actually originally involved the witch stumbling across Rapunzel and the prince in the act of making their children, to put it lightly. You see, in the 1812 version, the prince and Rapunzel were not married, so the 1857 version involved the prince actually marrying Rapunzel in the tower, so that their children were no longer conceived out of wedlock. There are a lot of sexual undertones in the Rapunzel story. Rapunzel's mother, Craving Rampion, was symbolically sexually suggestive implying that the woman who was unable to control her lustful desires became somewhat of a nag, which led to the poor husband going astray, a theme not too dissimilar from the tale of Adam and Eve and the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Everyone in this story is punished for their lust in some way, with the prince's blinding being the most overt Freudian punishment, with his lustful eyes literally being gouged out of his head, in a way which is not too dissimilar from the symbolic castration of Rochester in Jane Eyre. Still, despite all this, the fairy tale is on the side of the lovers. It certainly doesn't endorse keeping women ignorant and isolated from the world. Historically speaking, Rapunzel's story shares a lot of similarities with that of Saint Barbara, the 3rd century Holy Virgin. According to the tale in the old medieval book, The Golden Legend, there was once a rich man named Dioscoros, who had a daughter called Barbara. Out of fear that another man would see his daughter's radiant beauty, Dioscoros built an impenetrable tower that he locked Barbara away in. Naturally, according to the laws of the Streisand effect, um, the degree of her beauty only amplified the imaginations of princes from all around the country due to the extreme measures her father took to hide her away, and thus princes tried to win her hand in marriage, despite never seeing her. Barbara, however, was de so dedicated to God that she refused all the proposals. One day, when her father was away on business, Barbara installed a third window in her tower. And this was not for any nefarious reasons, she wasn't sneaking a lover in by all means. Barbara was purely wanting to honour the Blessed Trinity with a third window. When her father returned, she showed him the new window and professed to him her Christian faith. The caveat of this story was that Barbara's father, as you can guess from his name, was a pagan, a Roman pagan, and interestingly, Barbara had never interacted with anyone, particularly any Christians, so the story implies that the Christian god was able to penetrate the walls of the tower and convert her, despite her never interacting with anyone. Her devout Christian gesture enraged her father so much that he immediately drew his sword to kill her. But just before the sword struck Barbara, she prayed to God, and he answered her prayer by miraculously opening a hole in the tower through which she could escape. Barbara ran for her life into the wilderness and hid in some fields, but she was spotted by a shepherd who had heard about her escape, and he returned her to her murderous father. Dioscorus took Barbara to the local Roman prefect and told him about her heretical rejection of paganism, for which Barbara was then sentenced to death. Dioscorus was then given permission to behead his daughter, which he did. Though shortly after her death, both Dioscorus and the Roman prefect were mysteriously struck down by lightning and consumed into ashes. Barbara's story, although has a lot of similarities to pagan stories of Zeus, you know, creeping through the walls, we have a lot of layovers here, actually has a story of martyrdom that spread across Europe, and she became the patron saint that invoked lightning and explosives. 
and by extension, she became the patron saint of artillerymen and miners. This was because uh, when cannons came to Europe from China in the 14th century, the dangers of these new war weapons led medieval cannoneers to search for some otherworldly protection, and due to her association with lightning, Saint Barbara became the natural choice. Her association with cannons and gunpowder was so close that Santa Barbara, her Spanish name, became the word for the powder magazine. Today, the Order of St. Barbara is a military honor society of the US for both the US Army and the US Marine Corps artillery, including field artillery and air defense artillery. It is awarded to individuals who have demonstrated the highest standards of integrity and moral character, displayed an outstanding degree of professional competence, served with artillery and selflessness, and contributed to the promotion of the artillery branch. Many years after the grim tales came the predecessor of Rapunzel's story in Italian folklore, Petrocinella, which was published in Naples between 1634 and 1636. In this tale, a pregnant mother became possessed with the desire for parsley, and she sees the neighbouring garden had lovely beds of herbs. In this story, no father or husband is actually mentioned, um, so it's actually the mother who strays into the garden, only to be caught by the garden's owner, who was not a witch, but an ogress. Like the original tale, the mother is threatened by death, and thus she agrees to hand over her daughter to protect herself. However, unlike Rapunzel, Petrocinella, which is another word for parsley, was not taken at birth. Instead, the ogress watches the little girl grow up and become very beautiful like the sun, and she actually interacts with the girl over the years, telling her to remind her mother of the promise she made her many years before. One day, aggravated by the ogress haunting her doorstep, Petrocinella's mother tells the ogress to just act on her promise, and the ogress does just that. She snatches Petrocinella by her hair and drags her into the deep, dark wood and up into a tower where she shuts her away. Again, there are no stairs and a doorway to the tower, only a single window. Petrocinella's hair becomes the gateway to her enclosed world, and just like Rapunzel's story, a prince comes along onto the scene, imitates the ogress, climbs the tower, and meets the beautiful young maiden. Interestingly, Rapunzel is also named after Parsley in the 17th century French version of the story by Charlotte Rose Cumont de la Force, Parsinette. Her troubles are laid upon her not by a witch, nor an ogress, but by a fairy. But the rest of the tale is the same format as the Grimm's version. However, the Italian version of the tale is much less tragic than the original Rapunzel because the heroine is far more savvy. In the Italian tale, she steals three magic beans from the ogress's hiding place, elopes with the prince, and makes for the city. The ogress gives chase after the lovers, but the three magic beans protect them on their escape. They toss the first magic bean over their shoulder, and it transforms into a ferocious dog. However, the ogress throws the dog a loaf of bread and passes by. The second bean transforms into a vicious lion, but the ogress captures a poor wee donkey in a nearby field, flays it, puts on the hide, and then, in another absurdist touch of fabulist, terrifies the lion into fleeing from her. But then the third bean becomes a wolf, and the wolf, seeing the ogress in a donkey hide, attacks her and swallows her whole. In Warner's conclusion on her essay on the topic, we see that Petrocinella depicts the desperate act of young women acting on their own. The ogre or witches or fairies ferocious desire to guard the Rapunzel from wandering male's attention, and her fury that the young girl becomes pregnant anyway arises from the recognisable aspects of adoption worries, that the single or poor mother's past will repeat itself on her own biological child. But you're probably wondering what her long hair potentially means. Well, some have argued that following the Christian origins of her story in the form of Saint Barbara, that Rapunzel represents a connection between heaven and earth, that her golden hair is like that of the angelic halo, the parallel of the biblical image in Jacob's ladder. 
Genesis 28-12 tells of Jacob's dream of a ladder set up from earth, and the top of it reached the heaven, and behold the angels of God ascending and descending to it. The witch, therefore, symbolises the fallen angel, Lucifer, who frequently ascends and descends, and her long, specifically uncut hair is itself a signal of virginity, and the chopping off her braids is the punishment for no longer being so herself. But that's just some Christian allegories that may or may not be associated with it. People have argued otherwise. But the story of Rapunzel functions within the norms of the patriarchal society within which the Grimms were writing. Zybes explains that the female hero is learning to be passive, obedient, self-sacrificing, hard-working, patient, and straight-laced. Her goal is wealth, jewels, and the man to protect her property rights. The Grimms use the story of Rapunzel to transmit the message to young women that in order to avoid Rapunzel's misfortunes, they must learn from her mistakes and live accordingly to biblical principles. Thank you for listening to Dark Pages and Eerie Epistles with me, Chinsu Dubois, the Lady of the Library. Today's episode was researched and written by me, and all citations and footnotes are included in the description box on the YouTube video format of the episode. The music in this episode was produced and supplied by Epidemic Sound. If you would like more content from me, you can find me on YouTube at The Lady of the Library, where you will also find links to my Patreon, newsletter, and episode request form. Remember, dear listeners, as we delve into the realms of folklore, monstrous legends, wicked creatures and haunted chapters, that you keep yourself safe as these dark tales hold dangerous and twisted allure. So stay bewitched, haunted and forever curious. And remember, books save lives, so keep reading. Thank you.